In Climate Watch, NOAA's latest Arctic report card paints an alarming picture of the climate crisis. With record high temperatures and melting sea ice, the report shows the region is warming more rapidly than scientists had previously predicted. In fact, the report claims that the rapid change has been extraordinary and should be considered the new normal. For more on this now, I want to bring in CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. Jeff, this is disturbing news. What more can you tell us about this year's Arctic report? Well, I wouldn't say it's surprising. I mean, each and every year, the pace of change in the Arctic accelerates. Uh, it's really this. This was the impetus for me to make the jump from a, a TV meteorologist to, into a climate specialist and go and get my master's degree in climate change. Watching my weather maps and seeing how extraordinary the change was in the Arctic uh, really propelled me into this. So it gives you an idea of just how fast things are changing. So the Arctic is warming at around three, in some cases, maybe four times faster than the rest of the globe. And, and the reason for that is Arctic ice is retreating very quickly. Uh, sea ice extent was the second lowest on record in September and then the lowest on record in, in October. Uh, since the 1970s, we've seen sea ice um, volume decrease by somewhere around two thirds or more, just to give you an idea of how much it's changed. And why that's important is because, you know, taking away ice is not a gradual change. Once you change what the Arctic is made of, it's no longer made of ice and, and it's made of, in certain cases, certain times of year, less snow. The surface is completely different now. It goes from white, reflecting all that sunlight back into space and not allowing it to heat up. It kind of acts like a refrigerator. All of a sudden, everything is bare. The ocean is bare. The land is bare. It's absorbing all that heat. And so that's exacerbating how quickly the Arctic is warming because now you have dark surfaces. You wore this, if you wear this on a, on a hot day, it's 100 degrees, the sun's beating down on you, it's gonna feel very hot. So it's kind of a seat change happening in the Arctic. Oh, thresholds are being pushed right now. So it's dangerous. And so we've seen a lot of that change happening this year. Yeah, and uh, as you're saying all this, Jeff, I think the obvious question becomes, how then does this affect the timeline for combating climate change? Well, I will say that, you know, the Arctic change may be happening just slightly faster than we thought it would, but overall climate change is happening at about the pace that we thought it would. So it doesn't really change things very much. All it does is hopefully raise awareness that people can see just how quickly climate can change and is changing the Arctic. And that is kind of an alarm bell, a bellwether, if you will, uh, for what can happen if thresholds are crossed in other parts of the Earth atmosphere system which can impact us much faster. So climate change, the impacts of climate change are accelerating and it could happen even faster and will happen even faster in the future until we kind of slow down and then stop our use of fossil fuels. Sure, and one of the things that it feels like you and I have discussed throughout this year uh, has been how climate change has this impact um, on the number of natural disasters that we're experiencing. The U.S. is now expected to break the record for billion-dollar disasters in a single year. Tell our viewers more about that. Yeah, so uh, NOAA tracks the amount of billion-dollar disasters, so the number of events that cost a billion dollars or more. The average is around 6.6 .6 a year over the last you know, few decades that they've been tracking it. Uh, the record is 16. We are at 16 right now, but NOAA says that by the time they tally all of this up and put out the final report in January, it looks like it'll be probably close to 20. We will shatter the all-time record for the number of billion-dollar disasters. Uh, and that's because you know, the fires in the West this year were unprecedented, the worst we've ever seen. Uh, in many cases, and across the United States, we've doubled the record amount of acres that have been burned. Uh, in the tropics, we saw 30 tropical systems. But the bigger record for the United States is that we had 12 landfalls, nine in the Gulf of Mexico. Both of those are records. The only bit of luck that we had this year is that the hurricanes uh, didn't impact major, densely populated cities, which is a, it makes a big difference. So let me give you an idea. So we're going to probably end up tallying around $100 billion worth of damage this year, despite the fact that we're breaking records with $20 billion events. But 2017, well, in 2017, we had um, you know, the most damage ever. And part of that was Harvey. Harvey hit Houston, $125 million in damage just in that storm alone, and then many billions more than that. This year, we won't quite get there simply because we didn't have a major hurricane hitting a major population center. So it's both of those things that factor in. It's climate change, 
more intense systems and also more exposed assets, people moving to places that, you know, are in harm's way of hurricanes or wildfires. That is uh, a, a bit of good news. Um, I know, Jeff, a lot of times when people will hear us talking about climate change and the big hurdles that our, our planet is facing, they get uh, overwhelmed by it all. Um, so I want to run something by you. Earlier yeah. this week, New York State announced its pension fund of $226 billion will be dropping all fossil fuel stocks. How big of an impact does this make on climate action? And do you expect that it'll inspire other states to divest as well? Yeah, I mean, it's huge, to be honest with you. I mean, this is something that activists have been fighting for for years. Uh, there are about 1,300 institutions that have uh, divested from fossil fuels now. Uh, schools like the University of California, Columbia University announced that they're doing it. Cornell University announced that they're doing it. The city of New York has done it. Uh, the UK, Ireland, uh, Sweden has done it. Um, and actually, believe it or not, about a third of divestments around the world, meaning that you're, you're taking your investments, your stock investments out of fossil fuels, um, about a third of those come from religious institutions like the archdiocese. A lot of them are the Catholic Church are divesting. So we're seeing this happen all over the world. You know, when, mm. when the idea, uh, when they came up with the idea eight years ago, Bill McKibben was a big part of that. Uh, people probably laughed at them. It, it seemed pie in the sky. But it is now a movement. It is happening. And it's happening quicker. It's accelerating. And so the fact that it's happening in New York State, right by the New York State Stock Exchange, sends a big signal uh, to companies all over the world that they should start divesting. They should make sure that their chain, their supply chain, divests as well. Because this world is moving away from fossil fuels. You know, Exxon wrote down $20 billion worth of assets last month to give you an idea that oil, fossil fuels are in trouble. They're not making as much money as they used to. And so a lot of funds are moving away, not just because it's green, it's sustainable, and that's what society wants, but also because it's just not a big money maker anymore. And uh, that, will that trend will probably continue into the future. So I think it's big. Ultimately, uh, a lot of those companies are controlled by those pocketbooks. And so interesting, Jeff, that point you made about religious organizations um, helping to fuel climate change um, progress. Jeff, always great talking to you. Thanks. I've, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, no. <laughs> it sounded like you had something more to say, Jeff. Go for it. I was just going to say that they're starting to emphasize creation care, not dominion, not control over the world, that we can do whatever we want, but we're managers, but we take care of it. So creation care is something that religions are starting to emphasize, that that's our place in this, on this earth, that God put us here to take care of the earth, not just have dominion and do whatever we want. And so that's kind of a change that's happening in the churches right now. Very interesting. All right, Jeff, thanks.